Well, I think obviously the Fed has had a lot to do with this. But remember, the market has gone up, as you said, uh, a lot, 17% since the bottom. We're less than 4% from the peak. But remember, in September, we were at almost 18 times forward earnings. Right now, we're 16, 16 and a half. We are looking at a tough quarter, but then things will start to get better in the second half of the year. So you have better earnings outlook, a much better interest rate environment. It was 3.2 on the 10 year. Now we're barely at 2.6. Two, 2.58. Okay. Today. And Below to six. So we have an environment in domestically that looks a little bit better than the worst people feared in December. People were very, very negative. December 24th, it looked like we might have a recession. We have not talked about a recession lately. And I think there's a chance that if we go three months out, we're going to look at a somewhat better economy in the second half than people had expected. What do you think, Rob? I mean, Joe, Joe suggests and we show it on the wall. What's really changed? Powell made the great pivot. And the stock market zoomed higher. Mm -hmm. Now what? FedEx tells you, well, the global conditions aren't really great. UBS so, you know, mm -hmm. doubles down on that as well. Mm -hmm. So there's great concern about the global economy, yet the market goes straight up because Powell made his powerful pivot. Well, I also think we got into an environment where we were oversold. You know that we put a lot of risk on at year end based on that oversold condition, and we've re-rated, but, uh, you know, global growth slowing, the proof is in the pudding in terms of whether that re-rating was, was valid. And so we're in a vacuum right now where I suspect the rhetoric's going to turn to this this earnings deceleration and this earnings recession that we're probably going to see in the first quarter. I think business confidence remains high, but reticent because they're waiting to see what happens on trade. In addition, the tariffs are making it more expensive to make some of these decisions. And so you have an environment where I think trade is now going to work its way back onto the front burner. The Fed, I think we can argue that they reacted they're now, they've proven that they're pragmatic. They've proven that the, the dots are probably going to come in. They're going to talk about the balance sheet. Well, what's next? We have this, That's right. what's we have next? this vacuum, this what's company next? specific vacuum. And I think if you get a trade deal, I think the second half can be strong. So here's what we've done in portfolios we've de risked a little bit in this vacuum to make sure we're focused on the headline risk and then we expect that fundamentals are going to reassert themselves and that's how we're positioned. All right, Doc. Weaker in. global trade trends. That's what the FedEx CFO was citing and clearly the key word there is trade and could we see something happen in trade in the next 90 days? Yes, I believe so. Um, and so as I've said all along, the Fed is the most important thing. Your statement about the powerful pivot, yes, that is what it is. As far as China and trade pricing in, it has not been, again, because we don't know what that is going to be, Judge. But I think clearly with enough of these statements about how trade is what's impacting this negatively right now, we're going to see some movement Dr. on that Dr. from Dr. both Jay, sides. Dr. J, you don't think that some of the news on trade is priced in. No, right now. has to be. Has oh, to be. This much of it, because again, okay, so what is it? I mean, you know, I don't, I don't want to point to them that hard, but <clears throat> what is it that is in the rhetoric about trade that we can specifically say, this is going to be good for FedEx. This is going to be good for retailers. This is going to be good for tech. Pro progression from the administration and progression on China's views of this. So that indicates from a market perspective, a move towards compromise. All right, and well, I think some that, of that much, is I agree. In. And towards compromise, I'll give you maybe 15, 20%. But as far as hanging something on something that the either Lighthizer or Mnuchin or anybody else um, from our side has said about this, there's nothing you're, you're, so you're that we can say only 10 to 15 percent is, is priced in, in. And that's the optimism about them coming to a deal. But then what does the deal look like? We talked about that from the beginning. Right. What is this deal going to look like? Is it just rolling back to where we were in the tariffs? Because there were tariffs when we started this thing. Mm -hmm. um, or are they going to wipe out those tariffs altogether? If you're telling me that both sides basically look into the abyss and say, nope, we're going to get rid of these tariffs altogether, Judge. I will give you a 50, uh, you know, 50 points as far as S&P like that out of you that. You think we rip that much? That's yes. Interesting. That's not that much. We've had 50-point days without anything like that. That's a yeah. fair point. It All right. Now, point. We, we turn now to Paul Richards, who watches you know, on this Fed day. You watch the Fed as closely as anybody, <laughs> um, and you know about the power of the pivot that was made. So now what? 
I think you got to, what was the price of that pivot? They did pivot, I agree. He had to, because I think he made a mistake in December, and they knew that. Mm -hmm. So you, the S&P's up 13% year-to-date. I would say 7% of that was the pivot. The other 6% is hopes of a trade deal. So to me, the next step is, if you get a trade deal, and it's got to be constructive, but I believe, Scott, you don't go this far into negotiations to not get something constructive. That's the push to 3,000. However... So therefore, what that tells you is that the Fed today gives you more risk of upsetting the market than it does upside. The good news is all in with the Fed. But to me, the Fed will not make a mistake today. Powell knows what a mistake looks like. I watched that CBS interview. I shouldn't say that, I suppose, recently. No, yes, you can. We've said it minutes, ourselves. That, that told us a lot about what he's doing. He's carefully scripted. He will not make a mistake today.